Hello everyone, Brandon here with the GDNT Basics video question line. Today's topic is position tolerance on threads. The question today is from Tim and he wrote, we tend to use true position on threaded holes. Is this valid? If so, what is the proper way to measure it and what is it actually measuring? Is it the true position of the pitch diameter? Let's take a look at this. This is a question we get quite a bit. Uh, and, and we find that a lot of times, uh, probably more often than not, uh, people don't know what is supposed to be measured here, uh, and they go, they measure the wrong thing. So let's take a look at this. So I have pulled the, um, the paragraph here, or section uh, 2.9, right out of the ASME Y14.5 2009 standard. And here is how it reads as far as the... Uh, uh, what's being positioned or located and oriented as far as threads go. So it says each tolerance of orientation or position and datum reference specified for a screw thread applies to the axis of the thread derived from the pitch cylinder. So if you, if you try to do a search, if you do have the PDF format of the standard, try to do a search for pitch cylinder, it is going to show up one time in the standard and it is right here in section 2.9. Uh, so to continue with this, it says, where an exception to this practice is necessary, the specific feature of the screw thread, such as the major diameter or minor diameter, shall be stated beneath the feature control frame or beneath or adjacent to the datum feature symbol as applicable. So over here on the far right hand side, uh, what I've done is I've taken an image uh, that we use uh, in the course and the way that it states there is that a thread has three diameters. There's the major diameter, the minor diameter, and the pitch cylinder diameter. Um, so unless otherwise specified, like it says over here in 2.9, the geometric tolerances and or the datum reference applies to the pitch cylinder diameter. So I've created this little example drawing down here. And on the next slide here, I'm going to kind of blow this up so we can take a better look at it. Um, but we can see that we have... We have 10 threaded holes here. They're 5 8 11 UNC uh, class 2B, so which, which signifies that it is an internal thread. Um, so let's take a look at this blown up uh, so we can dive into what this really looks like. Okay, so I have the drawing blown up here. And I've included this image up here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, these are what are called flexible hole location gauges. Uh, otherwise known as centerline hole location plugs. These are available through a, a lot of different companies um, that, that make gauges, plug gauges, stuff like this. Um, but what this does, and if you look at the, the little drawing that they have up here, so what this does is it threads into the hole. Uh, now we're in this one here, we would be inspecting 10 holes. So it doesn't mean that we have to buy 10 of these. Um, which, just to give you a, a, an idea here, in uh, 20, the year 2020, these gauges run about $100 a piece. So we, don't, we wouldn't have to buy 10 of these in order to inspect all 10 holes. That would be uh, convenient, but we, uh, we would have to keep inventory on all 10 of those. Um, but over on the right-hand side of this, if you look at this drawing up here, we have the thread, so uh, in this case, uh, we have a 5 8 11 UNC, so that would be the thread, uh, disregard what is sitting here on these, these two plug gauges, these are just examples, but that would be the thread uh, that we would spec out and buy for this gauge, and these things are slotted, and the reason that they're slotted is when you screw these into the threaded hole, um, they are going to engage on the pitch cylinder. So they're not going to, uh, it's not going to be the major diameter, it's not going to be the mi minor diameter, it will be on the pitch cylinder. And once you thread these in, now um, I've used these, you don't have to screw them in all the way um, because you, you don't want this, and I see people do it, but you don't want the face of the gauge to come in and you don't want to over torque it and then wind up having the the axis of the feature be distorted in any kind of way. I normally leave a little bit of a gap on these uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, 
But uh, regardless of how you use those, that threads in, it engages on the pitch cylinder. And then look at the little diameter that's on these. And uh, every one that I've ever used has this same diameter here, which is a quarter of an inch. It's plus one tenth. Um, this one here is plus or minus one tenth of a thousandth. Uh, most of the ones that I've used have been calibrated and uh, they, they're a minus one thousand. Uh, but it all depends on what you, what you buy, who you buy them from, what quality you get and everything on what the accuracy of the diameter is. But they're still, they are very, very accurate. You can see up at the, the, the top here, it says concentric to the uh, pitch diameter with a total run out of two tenths. So it's guaranteed, you know, no more than two tenths. So when you screw that in, you're going to come over, uh, if you're using a CMM, you're going to come over and locate this quarter inch diameter. And when you establish a cylinder from it, you're going to, you're going to get the axis. Um, so you're going to, you're going to be getting the location, uh, and you will get the orientation along with that. Remember that, uh, when we're looking at a feature control frame for the thread, um, a, so the first part of this, the primary datum is going to take, let me get this big circle off of here. It's going to take this cylinder. So remember we have the diameter symbol right here in the front. So it's going to take this cylinder. So if we look at this now, excuse my, my, uh, my art here. So we have this cylinder, the diameter of this cylinder, put this right here. So the diameter of the cylinder is 16 thousandths. So that is the diameter. And datum A, I kind of look at this in like an isometric view. Datum A is the bottom of the part, right? It's the surface right back here. Um, note that uh, per the 2009 standard, we do have flatness on uh, the datum feature A. So it's a flatness requirement of five thousandths. That is qualifying A as a datum. So it's qualifying that when there is a datum. And then we come over and look at B. We have perpendicularity of five thousandths back to A. So perpendicularity to A is what's qualifying uh, this datum. So the, now we're just looking at the first requirement here, just A. So A is taking care of orientation and it's orientation only. So we can't locate to A, uh, but we can orient to A. So that's normally the case when we're using position, not always. But that is normally the case that the primary datum is establishing the orientation. So it's taking this 16,000 diameter cylinder, making that cylinder, that, which is the tolerance zone, it's making it perfectly perpendicular to A first. The reason for this, um, if you haven't been through the position class yet, uh, the reason for this is this cylinder or this tolerance zone has to be oriented before we can do any kind of location. Um, just think about holding something in your hand and spinning it around and twisting it. Well, we can't accurately put this uh, cylinder uh, somewhere in space until it's oriented. So once we lock it down to A and make it perfectly perpendicular to A, well, now we can come in, take the arrow off of A here. Now we can come in on B and we've circled B down here, which is this bottom surface here. Um, now, each one of these cylinders, we can come in and say, okay, well, we've, we're, we're a half an inch here, basic dimension of a half an inch up in Y. Uh, normally, not, not always, depends on what industry you're in. This direction is going to be Y, looking at the print. This direction is going to be X, looking at the print. Like I said, not always. Um, some of you guys out there in the automotive world, especially, uh, I know that you guys, uh, have different different axes, different planes uh, than the rest of us. But regardless of what you call it, uh, in that direction, coming from B, we're gonna now locate at 0.5. And then from the 0.5 basic dimension, we're gonna go up four inches. Um, again, we're coming from B, we're gonna go up four inches, and that's gonna take care of the other, the five holes here on the top. But again, we're locating the tolerance zone. Um, so I like to have people look at this as just look at the tolerance zone. So um, we, we use the, the, the term true position quite a bit for position. Um, it really is supposed to be position tolerance. But where the basic dimensions, where this five is going to, or half inch is going to, and this half inch is going to, is this crosshair right here. That's the true position. And on that true position, 
is the position tolerance. So a half inch up and then a half inch over. So C, looking at C, um, and up here we look at datum feature C. It's got perpendicularity again, just like B, except now the requirement is perpendicularity uh, first to A, and then secondly to B, and that's gonna qualify C um, as a datum feature. And then now coming from C, um, we have the half inch, you know, starting from this rail, datum plane, if you will. Uh, we're a half inch over with a basic dimension. That, that is the true position. And then from there, we have our spacing. Uh, so we have our five holes across uh, in the Y direction, like I said. So we have our five. Now notice the way that I've dimensioned this on this drawing. Um, I have made this a reference dimension. So the spacing from the first hole to the second is two inches, but it's only a reference dimension. And then what I've done is, if you look at this, I have four times and then a two inch basic dimension. And then in parentheses, I have equals eight inches. So this is the method if you go into section one of ASME Y 14.5, the 2009 standard, uh, when we have repetitive features, uh, instead of having all of these basic dimensions, we, I could have put in there, I could have made this two inch basic, and then I could have got, I could have just gone right on down the line and done in here, then in here, and then again in here. Um, I could have done a, like a baseline coming from back here to each one of them. I could have made the first hole my baseline, but this repetitive feature, the way of dimensioning here for any, any of you out there that are making drawings, Doing the repetitive feature here really helps clean up the drawing. Um, it makes sense. I mean, we got four times two inches. Well, it's one, two, three, four. So four times two inches on there. It is basic dimensions. Uh, again, if you have not been through the uh, position uh, part of our course, uh, these must be basic dimensions that are locating uh, the true positions. We are not allowed to use plus or minus tolerancing here, so it does have to be basic dimensions. So, um, Getting back to this, the thread here, like, like I said, this is the pitch cylinder that we are locating here. If you guys are seeing it um, exactly the way it is on this print right here with position called out just like this, then that means that you always have to inspect or measure the pitch cylinder's location and orientation, um, not the major diameter, not the minor diameter. So what that means is if you're taking a best fit pen, and as I travel around doing training all over the country, what I find is um, inside of these holes, people are normally taking, more often than not, are taking a best fit pen, a gauge pen, uh, and taking whatever fits in there the snuggest, and will slide it into that hole, and then they will come over and they'll probe that, or take a height gauge, or a micro height, or whatever they're using to, uh, to find the position uh, or the location of the hole, they'll put the best fit pin inside of there. And according to the standard, that's incorrect because now you're engaging on the minor diameter. Um, and like it, like we stated uh, in that last slide, if it said underneath here, M-I-N-D-I-A, now quality is allowed to go in there and do that best fit pin. So what, this is what we normally recommend to engineers is that if you know that your, uh, uh, your vendor, if you know that your own quality, internal quality, um, or even the machinist are going to inspect this and validate that they've made the part correctly, um, by taking a best fit pin in there and not using one of these flexible hole locating gauges, um, then you should put minor diameter on there if it's a tapped hole. If it's a threaded shaft, um, like I said earlier, the major diameter would be the note we would put underneath there. Um, you wouldn't put the, for this one here, you wouldn't put, because it's a tap hole, you wouldn't put major diameter underneath there because um, that's harder to get to than the pitch cylinder. Um, but the my, minor diameter is very easy to get to. We can take a best fit pen, put it in there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The thing to note here is when you use the best fit, it's going to be sticking up. So make sure you truly have the best fit pin that you can put inside of there if you have the note here. Um, now, uh, I'm familiar with one company that, that failed an ISO audit and the auditor was actually pretty sharp on GD&T, was watching the inspection method, asked to look at the drawing. Um, he noticed that 
they were putting a best fit pin in there to inspect it and knew the rule about this and that it's supposed to be the pitch cylinder so if the drawing states you know how iso is you know do uh say what you do do what you say so if it states in here uh, nothing underneath here it's going to be the pitch cylinder but if it has the minor diameter under there then now you can use that and that is a legal way to to measure that by using that best fit pin inside of there to engage on the minor diameter so Tim, this is uh, this is how we measure it. It is it is supposed to be the pitch cylinder as you as you question there on the, the very last part of your statement. It is supposed to be the pitch cylinder, um, not the minor diameter, not the major diameter, unless it's stated uh, somewhere that it's supposed to be one of those two. And like I said, we encourage engineers to do that unless you know it will be inspected um, to the pitch cylinder. Okay, guys, that wraps up today's. Um, Again, like I always say, send your questions to questions at gdntbasics.com. We would be happy to answer them. Thanks for listening today, guys. Have a good day.